What the hell is even that? There's no bigger crime in 2024 than messing up someone's pronouns. And the key word here is crime, because our first clip of the day concerns a transgender inmate who lands himself a hefty payout for the most unexpected reason. As always, stick around to the end for the recap, this week's woke news and much, much more. Transgender inmate Christina Lust just won half a million bucks who settle a discrimination lawsuit with the Minnesota Department of Corrections. Last word, Jeff. I just think the funniest part of the story, I read the article, I was not aware of this, because, you know, people say trans women are women, and then you see the picture and you're like, ah. <laughs> I don't know. But anyways. But you can't say the anything. The part of the story was about how part of the discrimination case was like, our client was being bullied mm. by some of the other inmates. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Prison. <laughs> it's prison. This guy just killed a family of five, and you're like, he's not using my pronoun. <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> so dumb. In other words, in today's society, killing someone gets you a pass, but using the wrong pronouns gets you death. I couldn't believe my eyes at the news headline. But this man actually killed a family, and the fact that he got a half million dollar payout just shows how mental the world's become. And speaking of atrocious crimes, you won't believe how this TV show sides with rapists because of systemic inequities. A woman is violently raped in a store dressing room, then takes the side of her rapist because he's black. She doesn't want her white privilege to get her attacker locked up. And then her lesbian partner tries to school the cops on racial justice. The welfare of her fiance's rapist keeps her up at night. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I wish I could show actual footage from the show without copyright, but it contains some of the cringiest writing you've ever heard. When asked if she was OK, the rape victim's actual response, word for word, was, we're all acutely aware of the systemic inequities that exist within the criminal justice system for people like Jay. I'm afraid he won't get a fair trial. Now, I don't know who writes this crap, but you could give me a hundred takes and I still wouldn't be able to read off those corny lines with a straight face. And racial discrimination seems to be a common justification for crime, because that's exactly what this representative states following Walmart's decision to pull out from crime-ridden neighborhoods. Walgreens is planning to close yet another pharmacy in the Massachusetts 7th. This closure is a part of a larger trend of abandoning low-income communities. These closures are not arbitrary and they are not innocent. They are life-threatening acts of racial and economic discrimination. That is why I joined with Senator Markey and Warren to demand answers from Walgreens CEO. Why was there no community input, no adequate notice to customers, and no transition resources to prevent gaps in health care? Shame on you, Walgreens. Having a website with talking points about health equity and underserved communities is not enough. Walgreens is a multi-billion dollar corporation that needs to put their money where their mouth is and stop General divesting is from black and brown communities. I'm not going to do that. Now, obviously, corporations like Walgreens don't owe you anything. So why would you expect a business to fill their shelves just so they can be looted and ransacked every day? The logic never makes any sense. So don't be surprised if you see this woman speak out next week about defunding the police. And she's not the only one to spew nonsense that makes zero sense. Our next clip involves a woman who fails miserably to define transphobia. See if you can follow along. As someone who is trans, I haven't medically transitioned because it was never encouraged by any doctor, especially here in Iowa, because it was already banned. But I will say, I will say, as someone, when you had mentioned that you were not transphobic, are you aware that most of the people who have banned and what you are fighting for is transphobic? You are being transphobic against kids like myself and other people before. Would you care to explain what that means, what transphobia means? Yeah. It, it's a lot. You, there are so many people here who have fought against being trans. Where is he going with this? Notice how she didn't even come close to answering the question. And whether she chooses to believe this or not, most people aren't transphobic. They're just pro-mental health. The vast majority of society realises that transitioning or mutilating children at an early age is not what's best for them. There's absolutely nothing phobic about it at all. And sticking with this so-called transphobia, 
Here's one school that kept a student's trans identity a secret from her parents. My daughter went to public school. Right around ninth grade is when she then came out as being trans, and I discovered it because her school had changed her name and pronoun on her emails. I was angry. How dare they change my daughter's name? How dare they not involve me? And they said, we need to be a safe space for her. And that's just absurd. Safe from whom? They knew nothing about her. They couldn't tell me the color of her hair, whether she was fat or skinny. They were focused on her trans identity and keeping it a secret from me. And the ironic part, they cared so much about my daughter that they sent CPS to my home. We pulled her out of the school. There wasn't one phone call to see how she was doing. They didn't care. They were virtual signaling. They were doing what they thought they needed to do. And then they just dropped her. They don't care. We parents care. We never stop being parents. And somehow we're the bad ones. We're the unsafe ones. It's really an upside down world. I can't explain it. Now I will admit, I'm not sure how the mother didn't realise that her daughter wanted to become trans, but either way it's definitely not the school's right to keep that deliberately hidden from the parent. Nor is it right for them to call CPS on the mother for not wanting the girl to transition. Homeschooling is exactly on the rise because these days you have absolutely no clue what kind of confusing education or propaganda is being fed to your child at school. And for our penultimate clip, Take a look at this college student who takes on Candace Owens about transgenderism in Native Americans. Native Americans were also cannibals. Did you know that fact? Did you educate yourself on the fact? Native Americans were so should cannibals. So should we just assume that it's natural for us to be eating humans because Native Americans were cannibals? I really think that don't apply to what I'm it, asking. It exactly applies to what you're asking. You're saying that you found a piece of historical knowledge, which I would genuinely love to fact check, that there were okay. trans Do you want some Native names? Americans of, the tr of their trans names? Yes. Lozen, Datese, Hastingkla, Oshish, Wehwa. These were trans Native Americans? Yes. Okay, I think what you're saying is that they probably found some that they thought they were, that they had different spirits because we know that the Native Americans were incredibly spiritual. There's no question about Are you that. Not which spiritual? Is, you believe in God? I, I do believe in God, yes. So that, that doesn't make me believe in trans people. That doesn't make me believe that you can switch your parts. I don't believe okay. they were performing surgeries. And you can let me know, but I don't believe that in Native American history they were performing surgeries trying to switch their genitals because they thought that they were born in the there wrong body. There were people body. that felt that they didn't belong in the oh, binary feelings. genders that we have. Okay, so you're talking about somebody in the history of Native American history had a feeling that they were, and now you're saying that they're trans. I'm just saying, I don't think you're really addressing what I'm asking. I'm saying that I think I've addressed it like 20 been. times, and you're just not wanting to hear it because you want to believe that there were trans Native Americans that were chopping off their genitals. Now, I really want to know what you guys think in the comments. Personally, I wouldn't deny that Native Americans may have identified as more than one gender or spirit. But even if she's right, what one culture chooses to do doesn't justify something as being natural or not, and you don't see American kids being taught other Native American values in school. The values being taught in church, meanwhile, have somewhat changed, as our final clip of the day might suggest. Church of England has its first non-binary, openly non-binary priest, Bingo Allison, not sure if that was her born name, 36, her Christian name, is genderqueer and says God guided them to come out. Good morning and welcome to the Church of St Margaret of Antioch in Toxteth. And today is Transgender Day of Visibility. Uh, my name is Reverend Bingo Allison and I am a non-binary transgender priest in the Church of England. Um, as part of our uh, commemoration of Transgender Day of Visibility, we have a morning prayer service uh, that we're going to read now. Um, and uh, most of the liturgy uh, is either directly quoted <coughs> from scripture or uh, is written by myself. You look like a clown. Now, regardless of religious beliefs, I think we can all smell this pandering from a mile away. Why any Catholic church that reads a Bible would decide to get a trans, non-binary priest is beyond me, and it just goes to show how far-reaching the spread of wokeness is. All things considered, the trend I'm noticing in today's world is that we have to be exceedingly tolerant as far as progressive matters go. Think back to the trans inmate getting a settlement for being misgendered, TV shows that condone rape due to racism and oppression, and least we forget, a trans, non-binary priest in church. Meanwhile, speaking out for more traditional or conservative values seems to get you cancelled or labelled a bigot. 
It's a deliberate attempt to silence the majority, and you can see very clearly how strongly these woke values have become intertwined in even our schools and universities. Now, for some news that really sums up the times we're in, the RAFAC, or Royal Air Force Air Cadets in Britain, have recently been cracking down on their gendered language. One of which is the term marksman, which they say is not only sexist, but gendered language as well. An internal memo stated that the new nomenclature is gender neutral, and the terms marksman and marksmanship must not feature when referring to the new shooting badges. Other examples of cancelled words include airman and airwoman, which were shelved in favour of aviator and aircraftman, which was shelved for air specialist. And that's not the only woke propaganda infiltrating the country's military. It was revealed earlier this year that diversity quotas had been enacted by the British Army to recruit more people from overseas without proper background checks. Which begs the question, how on earth did we ever get to a state where the priority for the country's military is DEI instead of finding the most capable people for the job? Either way, remember to share this video if you too are sick of the pandering, oversensitive direction that we're heading in. And as always, thanks for supporting this channel and I'll see you all next week.